Hello, David Harper of Bionic Turtle and a brief tutorial on how to fit U.S. Treasury yield curve rates with a cubic polynomial function. The cubic polynomial function is the most basic function we can use for this purpose. As soon as we do it, we'll see why it's not really up to the task and it's flawed for this job, but it's still a good place to start. I'm here at the U.S. Department of Treasury website where they publish daily treasury yield curve rates. So as of March 4th, 2008, I've got a yield on the one month maturity treasury bill of 2.01%. And then going out at three months, six months, and so on, I've got selected yield curve rates out to the 30 year maturity. But we can see immediately why we would want to interpolate in order to construct a term structure and that is all the way out to 30 year maturity but we really only have a few select key rates so we need to interpolate in order to construct that term structure so I copied this row as of March 4th the yields into Excel and if I switch over there those Treasury yields published by the US Treasury are in the yellow column. This first column is the time dimension. So here where T is 1, that's one year. The Treasury yield is 1.72%. Here's the three year Treasury yield, 1.86. And then we can see I've got a gap at 4. I don't have a yield for the four year maturity. I don't have a yield for the six year maturity and so on. I have several gaps. That's why I would interpolate. One thing I could just do is a linear interpolation and put a, put straight lines really in, but that wouldn't be very accurate. So let's try a cubic polynomial. That function is shown here in green. Our caret is the predicted rate, the predicted yield at time t. It's a function of r sub zero. That's the constant that really is the y-intercept because at time zero, these three terms will drop out and we'll be left just with r zero. And then we've got three terms. That's why it's a cubic. We've got time, time squared, time cubed, multiplied by respectively three constants, a, b, and c. So that's in green. I just made up some numbers and plugged them here into these cells and then plotted this cubic polynomial in the chart and you can see it's got some curvature and that's really because as a cubic polynomial it's nonlinear. So that's the plot, the function I made up. In red we have the actual treasury yields. And we can see my guess was really way off. This cubic polynomial is not fitting, fitting this data at all. But I can use Excel's solver to solve for A, B, C, and R0 to give me a better fit. So in this green column, I've got the solution for the cubic polynomial. I'll hit function 2 just so we can see that that's the function that implements this cubic polynomial for each maturity and plots me the line. One way to produce a best fit is to simply take the square of the residual or error. So if I look here at the, let's go to the one year mark, all I'm doing at each point where there is a treasury yield is I'm taking the difference between the actual treasury yield and the what I would call the predicted yield as predicted by my function. The difference and then squaring it. And then if we take all of those and sum those, I get the sum of squared errors. And what I can do is ask solver to minimize this sum. And so that will give me by changing these constants here, and that will give me a new function, which will be a better fit than my guess. So if I go up to data, select solver, 
and then I just need to give it a target cell. That's this cell here, which is the sum of all these squared errors or squared residuals. I want to set that target cell equal to a minimize. So Solver is going to try to minimize that. How will it do that? By changing these cells here, these four, those are the four constants in the cubic polynomial function. This is re Solver is really one of my favorite tools in Excel. It's really quite something. I only need to hit solve now. Solver's done it. That took maybe a second or so. I'm going to keep Solver's solution. And now see what Solver did is it solved for a new A, B, C, and R0 in order to minimize the target cell. I'm still using the cubic polynomial function. And if I look down at my chart, here is the plot of that cubic polynomial given my new parameters. And you can see it's actually pretty good fit. It's got the, it's not linear and it does a pretty good job of fitting the points I have out at least 10 years. Here's the problem. For a 30 year term structure, that cubic polynomial is typically not going to do the job across the whole maturity. Down here, you can see what I'm not plotting at 20 and 30 years are the, the cubic polynomial actually predicts negative rates. And so this is exactly why we're going to want to use a piecewise cubic polynomial because this this cubic polynomial really broke down for me at the longer maturities. But this is an example of how we can use Solver to fit this actual data to a cubic polynomial function. This is David Harper at the Bank Thanks for your time.